behind me here it's an ssd that's gonna take about a week maybe eight days to recover and you might think that's a long time for an ssd to be recovering and believe me it is not it's actually not bad because uh, considering there's some ssds i've seen they could run upwards of six months and i and i, I spoke to a friend of mine you see them in my other videos the ones i traveled to a few months ago i'm gonna link it above anyways <clears throat> he's got an ssd that, that's been running for uh, the last uh, few months I think three months. When I was there, he was running it and he's still running it today. So the SSDs, when they fail and you need recovery, get ready, lower your expectations because recovery is not always that simple and it's not always quick. This drive here, I've spent uh, probably a day and a half trying to figure out the right reset procedures because you have to play around with your settings. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. Right now it's doing pretty well. I think it's 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 reading at 300 kilobytes per second and but it has to repower every single time it hits an error. So it will read, stop, repower, repower twice and then continue reading. So I had to play around a bunch of different settings uh, before I got to that point because otherwise this drive would take forever. Now we've only given uh, maximum three weeks to recover this uh, sometimes the client doesn't want to wait uh, I guess they can forget about the data within three weeks so I get it down to I think will be down today is Thursday I'm honestly thinking this this drive will be done probably by Monday is when I'm gonna be copying it to a target drive it's only 130 gigs so if your SSD if, if your SSD fails you're pretty much unlucky I mean from my personal experience using SSDs since 2000 and I think 2009 or 8 I got my first SSD, which was a 32 gigabyte. And that SSD still works to this day. I still use it once in a while. But out of all my SSDs, and I went through a lot of them, I only had one on me fail, which was uh, OCZ Vertex. That drive didn't last very long. I actually have it here. I was trying to play around with it to see if I can recover it. But since it's not a paying job, I'm not gonna waste my time. So you're gonna be a bit unlucky if your SSD fails. But it shouldn't matter because if you keep current backups, that shouldn't be a thought in your head. You should not be in a position where if you're running a company and you have an SSD and your drive fails, all your business data is on that SSD and now what are you gonna do? Backups are important, but unfortunately, if everyone backed up, we would not be in business. I mean, we would be in business because we do forensics, but uh, from the SSD recovery standpoint, we would not be in business, nobody would be. But people are a bit lazy, they don't back up. So let's go look at some options on this drive and see um, what works for this particular drive. Doesn't, doesn't mean it's gonna work on any other drive. Every drive behaves differently, every drive needs different settings. Uh, in this particular case, this particular settings work in this drive, but I've had drives, if you I'm gonna link it above, uh, when, I, when we first got the deep spy with NVMe add-on, we had a MacBook come in. It took, I think, uh, two weeks to recover. And I settings were totally different. So it's just about finding the right uh, settings for each drive, and it doesn't always work. Sometimes it's so bad it doesn't read. But anyways, let's jump into it. Let's see uh, how I set up for this particular job. So before we get there, I do want to say that I have tried P3000 before going to DeepSpar, but unfortunately the P3000 is lacking a lot of control that I get with uh, DeepSpar, so I can't, well I can do dual repower, but it's not as um, advanced as it would be in DeepSpar, so uh, I got it to read a little bit, you can see here by the green, but it wouldn't go any further. Uh, so I had to stop and also also another option for this drive is uh, if it st starts giving me too many problems I can either heat it or I can cool it with uh, spray, but that's an option as a last-ditch effort if this drive gives me a problem So the drive you're recovering here is uh, Samsung 960 Evo 500 gigabyte um, I've had uh, other Evos. I haven't been this lucky. I mean the success rate on recovery is usually low It's about 20 30 percent at, at, at the most and if someone tells you anything else it's BS The success rate is low and unless they got very very lucky with the drives they got from speaking to people in the industry They pretty much say the same thing 20 30 percent is the it's a pretty much upper level that you're gonna get when it comes to SSD so always lower your expectations if you're going into this business or if you sending a drive in for data recovery uh, just just keep in mind that the recovery is gonna be low. So let's go over the settings on this drive So this client only wanted uh, desktop documents and downloads uh, All that data is about 130 gigabytes uh, Doesn't seem like much, but uh, it's at these speeds. I think it will be done It says seven days, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be seven days. It's probably gonna be somewhere uh, uh, Maybe by today's Thursday, so I would probably guess it will be done by uh, give or take maybe Saturday and then Saturday I'm gonna start copying data over. I know I said different day earlier in the video, but 
Um, now that I look at it, I think that's the kind of uh, time lens we're looking at. I, I started this yesterday at 7 p.m. It, it took it took time to get to the, get the MFT. If we didn't get the MFT, we would be spending a lot of time reading empty space on a drive that's not necessary. Uh, see, we have 8,390 on red, which is not bad. I, the block size is actually set at 1024. Not ideal block size because usually when you set block size for these drives, the smaller is better. In this drive's case, the larger block actually helps quite a bit. So let me stop this recovery here for a second. So let's look over how I set up uh, Deep Spark. So we got single pass. I turn off skip bad blocks because I want to read everything right away. I usually, I usually do that with SSDs. I don't skip bad blocks because it's just, there's a chance of drive dying. So let's just get as much as we can in one single pass. Uh, read timeout. I played around with different ones. In this drive, 200 milliseconds works well and block size 2048 overnight it was 1024 because i wasn't sure how the drive is going to behave overnight when i'm sleeping so 1024 was safe now that i'm here i can watch it 2048 is good any higher than 2048 for this drive it's too high it's not going to go uh, another option is um, drive ready timeout it was i think initially 20,000 milliseconds we got it down to 2000 and drive uh, repower cycle i think it was from a thousand to one to 100 and uh, the last thing to set up was pcie hardware reset procedure pcie pers persistent reset that was the best and the last thing is control n doesn't work remotely so we have to go like this drive reset procedure we want the hardware reset and we want to repower the drive and uh these last options here at the end also block in it i don't know if that makes a difference but i have block in it enabled and uh, the last three options here don't know if they make a difference i think if we turn them off it wouldn't make a difference uh we gotta leave uh send this id on because we need that so we see here 8390 on red let's uh let's restart this so we're gonna go from here with uh from the beginning let's see if we can get to those 8300 i think it's actually less than that uh, initially I had 4,000 something, but when I went back to reread those bad blocks, I didn't read them. So I think one of these could be a false positive. Yeah. So here we go. These are the real blocks, but the ones beforehand are not. So, uh, we can s make the block size bigger if you wanted to, and then we can probably get those. But for now it's reading, it's one error once in a while. It's not a big deal. So I don't really worry about this. Another thing with this drive, reading the MFT was important because you want to get the, the file structure. Otherwise we're wasting time. The reading the MFT, actually, once I get the settings right, the, the MFT reading took about, uh, I think about 12 hours. I think 7 in the morning, I started the MFT. 7 p.m., I was sitting at home my laptop and I remoted in to see if it was done. It was just finishing. I was actually watching it as it was finishing the child objects. So it does take a while to uh, read MFT, but we got pretty much the entire MFT. We did not see any, uh, uh, it would say, lost in here. If there was some uh, damage in the MFT, we didn't see everything, but that's it. Anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, I just want to talk about this particular drive and SSD recovery in general. Uh, I don't think people, a lot of people cover this this topic. I mean, people do cover SSD recovery, but they don't cover the, the probability and then success rate. Uh, so I think it was good to kind of open some of the customers or my viewers' eyes to understand that SSDs are not that simple to recover. And if they are, they take a long time. So you, you are going to be up for, if you, if the data is really important, you might be waiting there for maybe a year. If it's, I mean, I've seen drives go really slow and clients just don't want to wait. And, and remember, it takes a, a machine. So if you, if you only have one machine, it's not really, um, ideal because you have other jobs coming in. So you might have to, uh, either invest into another one or maybe pull this job off, do another one and swap and vice versa. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, Make sure you subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you in the next video.